This recording is the last in recordings that cover the reproductive system, and specifically this will look at the hormones in female reproductive function. So kind of putting together um, what's going on in the ovaries with what's going on in the uterus, as well as relationship to hormones that are produced um, by the um, ovary is what we'll look at here is in the female reproductive cycle right here this part is menses this here is the proliferative phase and here is the secretory phase and this is specifically the phases of the uterine cycle. So what's going on in the uterus is actually dependent upon hormones made by the ovary. So if we look at the ovarian cycle, you have right here, this is the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. Ovulation takes place at day 14 and then we follow it by the luteal phase, where we have the development of that corpus luteum. So what you'll notice is, while the oocyte is developing during the follicular phase, you start seeing the formation in kind of proliferation of those cells in the, in the, um, the follicular cells, or referred to as the granulosa cells, is they're starting to produce more and more estrogens. And what you'll notice is right here, this kind of the darker gray, that ref um, reflects beta estradiol. So what you'll notice is beta estradiol levels are the highest right later on in that follicular phase. And that corresponds to what you'll notice going on in the uterus is you start seeing that development of or that proliferation of the of the endometrium in that uterus and beta estradiol is allowing it to build up what you'll notice after ovulation you have that develop here of the corpus luteum corpus luteum is producing lots and lots of progesterone and so this kind of light gray right in here represents progesterone. So you produce, I mean, you still, you get some of it's converted to beta estradiol, but it's producing so much of it that it, most of it, it's going to be progesterone. It's not going to be able to be converted to beta estradiol. So you have high amounts of progesterone and progesterone is needed for what you see right here is that it's making the glands in the endometrium um, just more tortuous, um, I should say, I'm going to use the term again, more glandular, and it starts to secrete things, but that's needed for if we have implantation of that fertilized egg. And so those hormones that are made in the, in the ovaries are necessary for what's going on in the endometrium within the uterus. Now the hormones produced by the ovaries are um, being regulated by the anterior pituitary hormone. So if we go way up here at the very top, the light gray that you see here, so this right here represents FSH. The darker gray, which you see right here, represents luteinizing hormone. And so you notice the surge. That surge in luteinizing hormone is necessary for ovulation. So the, both hormones are, are needed during the development of the follicle. FSH is actually considered the more important one early on. Um, but as it's producing these estrogens, one of the things it does is that it actually um, has a um, permissive effect in that the prior exposure to estrogens allows it to develop more luteinizing hormone receptors and so it's permissive to luteinizing hormones so then luteinizing hormone we have more of those luteinizing hormone receptors so it will be important in these cells 
in this part of the ovarian cycle to respond to luteinizing hormone. And the luteinizing hormone is going to be important in allowing that corpus luteum to develop. We're going to be producing lots and lots of progesterone later on in that cycle. So let's look at the effects of estrogens, even though we've looked at some of them in that previous um, picture. So at puberty, the estrogens, what you're going to produce a lot more of those estrogens, it's going to cause um, the sex organs to develop, become more of an adult size. There will be some changes within the vagina. So in the vagina, the changes um, in the epithelium. So prior to puberty, it was more cuboidal epithelium. After puberty, it's going to be stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. So think about after puberty, uh, the, the, the idea is the, the, the female will become sexually active. The vagina needs to have multiple layers to it to protect it against abrasion during intercourse. And so the, the changes in the vagina are actually um, occur because of those high levels of estrogen. The, um, I had mentioned in the uh, endometrium, which you see here, the inner part of the uterus, is that the endometrium increases, it proliferates. Um, you're going to have that increase in, in, in thickness of the endometrium. Now it also affects, and here actually I'll just show you here so you can see on the um, the endometrium is here's early proliferative phase right here and you see here's the myometrium the muscle and you start seeing it's going to start to build up okay so we start to build up um, early on because after at menses we're pretty much down to mainly like right to here and so it's going to start to build up there now in the um, cervix so the cervix remember is that neck of the uterus what it's going to do is it affects the mucus of the cervix so it thins cervical mucus which is important at when you're in that um, the high levels of estrogen are going to be peaking around ovulation and we want that mucus thinner so sperm can make their way up into the uterus and it also is going to allow the pH to be more basic, or more alkaline, because an acidic pH is not hospitable to sperm. Okay, so it allows that the pH a little bit be more um, basic. It also estrogen has effects on the fallopian tubes. So the fallopian tubes, remember, are going to transport the egg down to the uterus. And the fallopian tube has these PEG cells, which are secretory cells, but it also has ciliated cells. And the number of ciliated cells do change during the reproductive cycle. What it does is it increases the cilia on these cells because the idea is the, it's going to help to move that egg down towards the, um, the uterus. So those are some of the effects of estrogen. What about some other things? Well, it does affect the breasts. So you think about when a girl hits puberty, they start developing breasts. And so you're going to have more fat deposition. You see the fat here. So you get more fat deposition. The, the breasts grow. Um, it does start to initiate the ductile system, the ducts, but it doesn't do anything with the gland themselves. The glandular material is not going to be the effects of estrogen, um, but more of the ductile system. So deposition of, of fat, growth of the, of the breast, and initiating the growth of the ductile system in the breast. And the girl's breasts get a little bit bigger. It does affect the bones. So it inhibits 
osteoclast activity, which would break down bone, which therefore this will help to stimulate bone growth. It also helps pr um, promote closure of the epiphyseal plates. Girls get to their full peak height sooner than the male because we do produce more estrogens. The estrogens, though, are also important in closure of the epiphyseal plates in males, but they that happens a little bit later. Girls, it's usually in our teens, males, it's in the males, it's usually when they're early 20s where they get their peak height. Um, it, um, since it inhibits osteoclast activity, which helps to promote more bone growth, when a female hits menopause, when you start lacking those estrogens, that's where you have more prone to osteoporosis. Um, it does also affect the skin. So you see the skin here. It allows the skin to be softer and smoother. It increased the vas uh, vascularity of the skin. So um, oftentimes after a woman hits menopause, they look a lot paler because they don't have as much blood flow to the skin. Um, it does uh, affects, I don't have a picture here, but uh, estrogen increases deposition of fat, not only in your breasts, but your thighs and the buttocks. So the idea again, it's um, more for be able to bear children. Um, this where women tend to carry their, their fat. It does affect the gastrointestinal tract too. And here you have a part of the small intestine here and here's the large intestine. It does slow motility somewhat. So I just want you to think about it is um, high, high, high levels of estrogens in a pregnant female. Pregnant females often complain that they're constipated because it can, high, high levels of it can slow that motility quite a bit. Um, so these are the effects of estrogen. There's some of them, there's a lot more effects, but these are some of the major effects of estrogens. Now what about progesterone? So progesterone is an example of what we call progestins. Beta estradiol, Beta estradiol was a estrogen. Well, progesterone is a progestin. This is the major progestin. Pro means for. Gestin has to do with gestation. So think of it as progesterone is the effects are for if you were actually pregnant and are going to deliver the child. Okay, so things about if ultimately going to be pregnant with a baby and then deliver it. So let's think about what it does. Well, in the uterus, you'll see secretory phase. If you look at here, look at the, the levels of the glands. So it definitely prepares that uterus for implantation and it thickens it, the lining, and promotes the formation of those glands and also some blood vessels. And it allows them to be more secretory. That's why they call it the secretory phase. So those are needed for to help to nourish the implant, the um, implanted zygote. Um, on the uterus, or sorry, not the uterus, um, well, still the uterus, the cervix, again, which is the neck of the uterus, is it's going to make cervical mucus thicker. It also, which is going to um, kind of close it off, makes it a barrier. We don't want any things to get up here because this is going to be where that the um, embryo and the fetus is going to develop. I want to protect it from any type of things that may get in there, any type of um, toxins or stuff. So it's going to be a barrier. It also will allow that the, the mucus um, to be more acidic um, and also kind of promote the vagina to be more acidic, which is not hospitable to sperm. So that's going to be effects of progesterone. Um, the cervix also decreases contractions of the uterus. So that's actually going to help prevent expulsion of the developing embryo. And so the high levels of progesterone try to keep that, because technically if you stretch a smooth muscle, which is the myometrium is smooth muscle, it's going to want to contract. So we don't want that to contract 
until childbirth. So the progesterone helps to prevent um, the, the um, contraction of those of the myometrium during development. It also affects, again, the fallopian tubes. And so again, I come back here. So fallopian tubes would be right here. So it's gonna be more of those PEG cells this time. So it increases the secretory activity of those PEG cells help nourish that fertilized egg on its transit down to the uterus because it's going to take six or seven days or so for the egg to make its way down to the uterus. It also affects the breasts. In this case, it's going to develop the lobules and the alveoli of the glands, so right in here. So it's very important in the, the glandular component of the breasts. Um, lactation will not occur without prolactin though. So it's, it's getting everything ready for when childbirth occurs and the woman chooses to breastfeed. The development of the glands will take place with progesterone. It also causes the, the breast to swell, becoming gorged. And typically, um, women when they first become pregnant, one of the first things they notice is their breasts hurt quite a bit and it's actually the effects of progesterone on the breasts. Um, this also can take place during um, a girl's uh, period that their breasts may be more sensitive at certain parts of their, um, their menstrual cycle. So these are some of the effects of progesterone. So we have the effects of estrogens, and then you have the effects of progesterone. So this will be the end of this um, recording covering the female reproductive system.